On our way down to Tauranga, we've stopped off to have a look around the Tipuna Quarry Park where Ed used to work. This would be one of the old machines that he used to work. the way. watch over the orchid gardens which unfortunately are long past their flowering period. Butterflies. Beyond the crucifix orchids is a good view of the tower on a harbour.
musical instruments high and low. After all that nature, you could just sit down and dream by the dreaming stone. Or if it's raining, over there under the shelter. What a marvellous place. You could spend all day here. The diamond princess is in at the wharf. All the passengers are off on their excursions. We're just starting off on a walk around the mount this morning. Glorious day. Shaded on the west side of the island. Look at the bird. sitting out there. And getting kitted up to clean up some of the oil off the beach from the ringer. This morning we're going on a walk down to Kaiti Falls. This is a view of the Mount industrial area in the distance from halfway along the track. This is the top of the falls. She goes over the edge. And then we'll pull further on down the track. Hey. Hi.
is the last drop of the falls, which we haven't seen before. track goes and over another bridge. And we're not the only ones enjoying it. Well now we're at the bottom, we have to start going up again. Betty's having a little rest before we start. Almost back up the other side and the mount comes into view again. We're on our way into the Wentworth Valley today to do a walk into the waterfall and um, the warning sign for this ford, some, some nut had crossed out ford in pencil and written Holden underneath it. People have been having a wonderful time building little cairns in the rocky stream. Travelling north from Dargaville, we've made a side trip into the Kaiiwi Lakes and found an absolute forest of tents and caravans here. This is the larger of the two lakes where boating is allowed. And on the other side of the road, there's a rather secluded little lake where there's no motoring allowed. Very pretty. Walking tracks are well defined. Different varieties of trees are named. And one of the cowries. Some lovely big cowries in here. This forty minute walk, and we're out for a cup of coffee and a piece of fruit cake. We're up at the lookout over the Waipua forest. Betty's gone up to have a good look. Certainly get a good view of the forest from up here. 
Here we are in Natani Mahuta. This is vital statistics. Approximate age 1200 years. We're at Nafa at the moment. It's a shame you can't smell the sulphur. This one would be boiling. Look at that. What temperature's turning in the heat? Yeah. 37 degrees, that one. Baby, baby, forty-six degrees. Forty-six, and bulldog is fifty-two. Well, this is a black one. Yeah. Oh, called bulldog. Bulldog. There's baby. It's not boiling, it's only about uh, 37 degrees. It's just the spring that's under it bubbling up. <laughs> and there's a couple more. Heading now to Dargaville via the Twin Bridges. This is an unusual situation. It's a bridge feeding into a bridge. Very pretty little posse. And the rest area in there. What a pretty place to stop. Betty reckons this looks like a bit of embroidery with a crochet edging. We're on our way north again and I've come back to the mouth of the Hokianga Harbour, just above Omapuri. Looking down towards Opanoni, as we did yesterday. We're now at Ahipara, and this is the start of 90 Mile Beach. to North Cape 
or Cape Reinga to give it its full name. On a bus trip up to the Cape now and this is a short stop at Hohora at Wagoner Park where the wonderful museum of the Wagoner family used to be. Unfortunately the young ones sold it all off in different directions and the only thing there is to see now is the decrepit old buildings. This was the entrance. Nothing but an internet cafe now. Cape, Cape Mariah Van Diemen. And around here to Cape Brianga and the lighthouse. Sydney's only half as far away from here as Perth is. This is the meeting place of the Tasman Sea to the left and the Pacific Ocean to the right. That's a closer view of the departure point of the Maori spirits. When they get here, there's two springs on the hillside. If they drink at one of them, they'll continue on into the spiritual world. If they don't, they miss out. And the other one doesn't have any significance at all. This delightful little bay was our lunch stop today. We had sandwiches and choppy bickies, tea and coffee. We've stopped in Tipaki Stream for some of them to do some sandboarding. Our driver's giving them instructions. Coming down slow with their feet dragging.
This is our last stop of the day. A marvellous example of a cowrie stump. And inside that marvellous stump is a staircase. up to a gallery. And pictures. Ceramic squares and various leaf icons. of motives. I'm looking down on the cafe in the shop. We're down at Kerry Kerry this morning. There's the old stone store and the Kemp homestead. Not as good a view of the Kerry Falls as it used to be. And there's not so much water coming over today. Just boarding the little ferry to go across to Russell. Fascinating little shops of Russell. Just imagine fine arts and gifts, books and coffee. Next to it, just as artistic, is Hammer Hardware. Magnificent Morton Bay food. 180 years old, they said. I've always loved the Duke of Marlborough Hotel. It's actually the fourth one to be built on this site. Three of them burnt down. Up on top of Flagstaff Hill. He's boating at the moment. Our visit coincided with a thousand others. This is the fourth flagpole to be erected. It hasn't been cut down yet. The sundial is on the site of the original two flag staffs that only had been cut down. So the British changed it to another hill, hoping that they could defend it better.
looking over towards Cape Brett and Orapokopoko Island. Beautiful beach that most of the no locals use. That's a shoal of blue Mau Mau fish. You always see them here, but unfortunately there's too much wind for him to risk taking the boat through the hole in the rock. We're going in now to Rua Puka Puka Island for a lunch break. Okay, well, our Jenny has brought us across to the Waiwai Tulia Passage, which will allow us the opportunity. We're allowed to go ashore on Orapukapuka Island. We're going to have a cup of tea. Beautiful outlook. and some chips and cakes. A sunny view like this. What more could you want? These are puka puka trees after which this island, Pura Puka Puka, is named. Betty's quite fascinated with them. We visited the Treaty House this morning, entering through the gardens by the back entrance. The gardens are very well maintained in the English cottage garden fashion. the home of James Busby who was instrumental in drawing up the treaty in the first place. The flagpole and the position that the treaty was signed. He's showing the construction. There's some quite interesting video displays throughout and we've just had a lecture on uh, the way they're saving the kiwis uh, by rescuing the eggs and incubating them in the various rooms in the Busby residence. Children and parents shared the bedroom with four children. And have a look inside the meeting house now. Thank you. 